A familiar face returns to the XL Energy Center tonight as Kevin Fiala and the Los Angeles Kings are in town. What do the Wild need to do to avoid 0-2? We discuss today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. That is right. Welcome to yet another episode of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked on Wild is available wherever you listen to your podcasts for absolutely no charge. On today's episode, we take a look at the Los Angeles Kings coming into town without a win themselves to see what the Wild need to do in order to come away with a victory here tonight. We'll talk about the return of Kevin Fiala to the XL Energy Center, and uh, we'll just go through some of the X's and O's for this game tonight. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. They are your number one source for all of your favorite props, odds, and lines. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And uh, the Wilds 0-1 on the season. They lost to the New York Rangers to start the season 7-3. We talked about it at length after the game. Not a great effort for the Wilds in uh, that one uh, against the Rangers. And so a chance to bounce back, yet another home game here, uh, and taking on a Los Angeles Kings team that has been up and down to start the season themselves. Before we dive into the Kings, I just, in looking kind of overall at what to expect in this game, I'm just going to lay it right out there to uh, start off the show today. I do not anticipate that line-wise there will be really any changes in this one today. And the reason I say that is because we're coming off of a game in which it was pretty evident that the effort level on defense, the effort level in numerous areas of the game was the main culprit for why the Wild ended up losing the way they did. And so the coaching staff, I would imagine, is going to try those same line combinations to see if they are workable with a better effort uh, in this one tonight. It is going to be Marc-Andre Fleury in net for the Wild. Uh, He will be opposed by Cal Peterson, so Jonathan Quick getting uh, a day off after uh, a couple of starts to start the season. We'll talk about that uh, coming up here uh, in a little bit, but I just, I don't get the sense that we're going to see any sort of line changes until this combo has been given an opportunity to uh, start the season, and if after... A handful of games, if these lines just aren't getting it done, then yeah, we're going to see some changes made to uh, who is paired with who. But I put it out there after the game. I didn't really feel like the lines offensively were the reason that the Wild were not able to, uh, to put forth a better showing against the Rangers. I think a lot of it came down to defense and positioning. So I would imagine we'll see the same line combos uh, for tonight that we saw on opening night. You know, you've got your Capri's off line. That's not going to change. Uh, Tyson Jost will be with uh, Jewel Erickson and Marcus Felino. I'd imagine the Boldy line stays intact. And then you've got your Dewar, Rossi, and Duhame line. Uh, that's what we're going to see until such time as a handful of games into the season. They're not working, and then Dean will start making changes to that mix. So I would imagine that uh, that those lineups will change. What I'm interested to see tonight is on special teams. Are the Wilds going to go with that same second unit on the power play? That was really the one area that uh, was not super inspiring of the special teams units. Just had trouble even uh, getting the puck into the zone when the Wild had the man advantage. 
And th- that's understandable considering you've got Kirill Kaprizov and then you've got a lot of the more top end players on that power play one. But if you are going to effectively utilize both units, you got to find a way to uh, get some sort of a spark on that second power play unit. Now, it's it's an interesting dilemma because what do you do there? Do you take some of that skill off of that top power play unit or do you, at various times in the game, do you just keep that same unit out there for uh, a majority or do you sub in players to uh, to try to keep most of that unit intact and just sub in a player here and a player there? Remains to be seen. I'm, I'm going to be keeping a keen eye on that group here in tonight's game just to see uh, how that looks and to see what uh, possibly can can look better for that uh, that power play too. But ultimately, I think the big theme here is that we're not going to really see many changes because y- you can diagnose if the effort was the problem, if the wild looked better tonight, then yeah, the effort was bad. But if the wild look better tonight from a compete standpoint and the line combinations still struggle to score, well, then that's where we're going to see some moves. But I would imagine tonight we're not going to see much of anything uh, in the way of changes. Flurry and net. The team is hoping that uh, the team in front of Flurry will uh, will do a better job of uh, of battling for the puck throughout the night, and that that will improve the numbers uh, overall. So uh, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see how it works. I would imagine this team is hungry to uh, to avenge what happened on Thursday night, and uh, so I would expect nothing less than a better effort. And it sounds like uh, in practice on Friday that. Um, the coaching staff was looking for that too. So I would imagine we'll get it tonight, but we'll wait and see. Uh, the Kings, the opponent here in this one this evening, and a familiar face comes to the XL Energy Center trying to continue a trend of former Wild players scoring against the Minnesota Wild. We will discuss that and more as we preview tonight's, uh, tonight's game against the Kings. All that coming up here on Locked on Wild. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. They are the best source that exists for all of your favorite sports betting info this season. From football to basketball to baseball to NHL, you can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, the biggest and the best, plus news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you would possibly want to know. And as always, BetOnline.net remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, golf, the NFL, college football, the NHL, you name it, they've got it. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action going on at BetOnline, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And uh, we'll remind the listeners once again that uh, in addition to our show, Locked on Wild, you can find the other Minnesota podcasts available on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7 and free of charge. So download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. The Los Angeles Kings heading to town tonight. They're 0-2 on the season. Had the lead against the Vegas Golden Knights in the Chrome Helmet Battle. It looked like something out of a Daft Punk music video with the Vegas Golden Knights wearing their gold helmets and the Kings wearing their chrome helmets. And visually, it was a bit of an eyesore, but the Kings led in that game up until the uh, the last bit of regulation in which the Golden Knights were able to score to tie it up. And Mark Stone ended up uh, taking care of business as the Kings ended up winning. That was opening night, uh, 4-3. to three. 
the Kings lose in overtime and uh, a loss to the Seattle Kraken most recently, who, if you're looking for teams to, uh, and I beg your pardon, that was a regulation loss for the Kings to the Golden Knights, four to three. Um, a four to one loss to the Seattle Kraken. And if you're looking for a team to kind of keep an eye on here this season that is not Minnesota Wild related, my money's on the Kraken. I think they are going to be a uh, very fun team to watch. Maybe not a playoff team at the end of the day, but uh, I, I like what the Kraken are starting to build with uh, some of their young centers, Matty Beneers and Shane Wright, and uh, the veterans they've put around them. I think that's going to be a fun team to uh, take a look at here this season. So uh, the Kings outpaced in that second game uh, against the uh, the Kraken. So they're coming in trying to find their first win of the season as well. And you look at the Kings lineup, and they've got some very solid players, and they have put together a very solid top-line combo in uh, – Kevin Fiala being part of that, although you look at what he has done so far through the first two games, no points yet, but uh, Wild fans are familiar with kind of what makes Fiala tick. It seems like it takes him a little while to get going scoring-wise to start the season every year, but now we have to factor in the former Minnesota player playing the Minnesota Wilds, and uh, we've seen Numerous examples of where former players score against the Minnesota Wild. Brent Burns seems like he does it almost every time the Wild play. Whichever team he is on, which is now the Carolina Hurricanes. But uh, just up and down the list, there are numerous examples of, uh, of teams using former Wild players to their advantage when they play Minnesota. So Kevin Fiala trying to become part of that list. And this is just a deep veteran laden team with some uh, nice young pieces that they are incorporating into the lineup. Quinton Byfield, who I know we had potentially discussed as uh, a, we had discussed as a potential return in the Kevin Fiala trade, but Byfield starting to get some time with this team. Drew Doughty, of course, is the name that uh, a lot of wild fans will point to. He's the one who said Kirill Kaprizov is overrated or overpaid. Uh, so he is obviously going to uh, draw a lot of attention from Wild fans. But you've got Adrian Kempe. You've got uh, the likes of Anze Kopitar. And so this is a Kings team that won a lot of their games last year on grit and grinds. They got into the playoffs with, I think, the lowest uh, expected goals of anybody in the NHL, they scored like 50 less goals than they were expected to. That speaks to defense and goaltending as uh, as being the reasons that they were able to outlast that and make the playoffs from last season. So a team that was looking to inject some speed and some scoring into the lineup, which is why they went out and got Kevin Fiala. And so uh, this is going to be a Kings team this year that is trying to play to some of that defensive and goaltending strength, but also to uh, to score some more goals. So you look at how the Wild did head-to-head -head against this Kings team last year. All the games were close. All of the games were uh, within one or two goals. And so uh, I would expect nothing less than that uh, against this Kings team here this season. The Wild went 2-1 and one against the Kings last year. And um, the loss that they had was a two to one loss. One of the wins was a three to two win. So it's going to be a close game. The Wild are going to try to put more of an emphasis on uh, on defense in this one. So I would imagine this ends up being something like three to two or four to three. I'll go four to three uh, for the final score. But the Wild, uh, the Wild are going to have their work cut out for them in this one because. This is a Kings team that even though they are 0-2, a lot of people have high expectations for them this year, much like Minnesota. And so uh, they're going to be eager, especially in Fiala's return to the XL Energy Center, they're going to be eager to uh, to put on a good show and to give him a win uh, against his former team.
Now, as for what the Wild need to do in order to come away with a victory in this one tonight, uh, well, let's look at some of the things that uh, the Wilds can do to get to one and one on the season. We'll do that as we finish today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wilds. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wilds your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, once again, for your first, uh, second listen today, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast to get the full lowdown of everything going on throughout the NHL, free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I will note once more that uh, you can find Locked on Wild along with the other Locked on Sports Minnesota shows on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Lockdown Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7 and free of charge. So download the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Wild Kings tonight. Both teams are winless on the season. And uh, the Wild trying to come away with the goal. They will not be facing Jonathan Quick, who started the first two games of the season for the Kings. It'll be Cal Peterson in net for the Wild. And so I think let's just let's look at the things that went wrong um, for the Wild in game one against the Rangers. Didn't get off to a they didn't get that ever important early lead. Now, it's not that they didn't play particularly poorly to start. It seemed like once the Rangers Got it from 1-0 to 2 to 3-0 is when things started to kind of turtle up for the Wild throughout the game. So if they come out with some energy, come out with some pop, and uh, really set the tone in this game from the get-go, and scoring early is always nice. So if the Wilds can, I think, come out of the gate swinging, come out of the gate aggressively, and uh, really try to handle the tempo, handle things uh, offensively, in even strength. All of those things that uh, they kind of went sideways for the Wild against the Rangers, that's, that's going to be huge. Now, Kevin Fiala against his former team, he is one that uh, the Wild are going to need to have eyes on at all times in this game. So this is where having... Uh, a player such as Jonas Brodeen, you know, he hasn't had to uh, to go up against Kevin Fiala for quite some time, back to Fiala's days in Nashville. So using Jonas Brodeen as a way to just keep Fiala in check, um, he's a player that, by and large, if he's not involved particularly early uh, in games, seems like he kind of gets frustrated. And so if the Wilds can keep Fiala from getting going early, he may kind of check himself out of this one uh, a little bit. Now, Fiala also in, uh, I think it was the game against the Golden Knights, took a particularly crucial penalty uh, late in that game. It's another thing with Fiala. And again, I don't want to sound like I'm like trying to dump on the guy because he's not here anymore. These are just the things that as somebody who saw him play for the last few years. He's an incredibly talented and dynamic scorer and is going to be missed by this team this season. There's really not, it's not going to be easy to replace that level of production. Just have it disappear and try to assume that player X and player Y can step in and fill it. It's, it's a tough proposition for this team. So he's a, a great player that, the Kings were able to get and add to their mix is just now with him coming in as the opponent. Like these are the things that we've noticed over the last few years that tend to be the knocks on him that we now study as kind of the, the game plan uh, against Kevin. So those are the things that, that we've noticed over the last few years while he was here is that, you know, he just, Sometimes it just gets frustrated and that leads to him, you know, maybe not being in it as much. So if the Wilds can keep him kind of on the perimeter, keep him on the outside, not let him get involved in the action, that might be a way to uh, to try to kind of um, neutralize him a little bit in this game. 
Obviously, special teams. Now, whether the Wilds double shift power play one or try some things with power play two, as we discussed at the top of the show, special teams is going to need to uh, continue to do good things here in this one tonight. Um, would like to I would like to see the Wilds continue to show some promising signs from the power play, especially early on in the season. So special teams goals in this one would be great. A couple, maybe one or two power play goals would obviously help. But it just you want to see those things trending in a positive direction as the season rolls along. So some continued good signs from special teams. Let's see this team utilize those four lines here tonight. The Wild were not able to do that because they were playing from behind so much uh, against the New York Rangers. Let's get that Rossi, Dewar, Duhame line out there. Get them their, get them their minutes and, uh, and attack this Kings team with all four lines tonight, which is done by kind of setting the tone early so that you're able to get those guys into the game as much as you'd like to um, down the stretch. So let's utilize those four lines. Let's uh, be better at, uh, at where the defense has been positioned throughout the game. And, uh, you know, it just it comes down to an effort thing. Just, just better at battling for the puck, better at knowing where to be, not kind of standing around or getting crossed up um, and leading to goals for the opposition. If the Wild do a lot of that, if they just play like we're used to seeing them play, I think they're going to be just fine in this game. This is a Kings team that, yes, has big expectations on them this year, but uh, it's always a team that the Wild have played tough, and uh, they've got plenty of experience doing that over the last couple of years. So just uh, just harken back to that and uh, come away with a win here in this one tonight. And I think... Uh, I think we'll feel a little better about the start of the season if that all does happen. So um, I'm expecting a wild win tonight. We'll see what happens there, but uh, hoping that we just more importantly get a better effort from this team and get a better look from the wild here in game number two of the season. Uh, that is going to wrap it up for today's episode of Lockdown Wild. We will have a preview episode for you coming up on Monday. Uh, we'll have a postcast tonight recapping the action against the Kings. So make sure to tune in for that. And uh, we'll preview the Avs on Monday. Plus, we'll take a look around the NHL as well. Double episode day coming up for you on Monday. So make sure to tune in for that. Make sure you're following along with Locked on Wild wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, subscribe on YouTube and turn those notifications on so you don't miss out on any of our previews, recaps, or just general episodes throughout the week as well. We got a lot coming at you here throughout the 2022-2023 season. So make sure you stay up to date with us by subscribing and following along every step of the way. We've got new episodes coming for you each and every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.